Good evening. The East Ham Conservation Commission will hold a remote public meeting on Tuesday, June 11th, 2024 at 6 p.m. pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, MGL, Chapter 30A, Sections 18 to 25, Open Meeting Law, MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, and Chapter 155 of the Code of the Town of East Ham, East Ham Wetlands Protection Bylaw. And before we start, I'm going to take attendance. Janet Benjamin. Here. Joanne Cossett. Here. Greg Douglas. Here. Mike Carnett. Here. Chuck Wagner. Here. And Karen Strauss. I am here as well. So this meeting will be broadcast on public access channel eight and is available on the town website at www-easttown.ma.gov. Um, please keep yourself muted unless it's your turn to speak and please let the chair know if you will be recording the meeting. And first up is an administrative review filed by Stephen Nizwecki. Applicant proposes a wooden shed at property located at 610 Samoset Road, map 14, parcel 088. Okay. Um, were you guys out there for a site visit this morning? Does anybody want to share any observations from that? Um, <clears throat> the owner was there. And he came out and talked to us and um, showed us the area, which we um, had seen in pictures. Um, Mike and Alex brought up, you want to tell them the issue that you brought up? Or are you puzzled by what I'm saying? They're not sure. We're not sure how close to the property line it is. And we weren't sure how far out from the property line something could be constructed. So the homeowner was going to check on that. And I don't know if, I know I didn't find out anything. I don't know. I think we left it that he was going to check on it, Alex? That's correct. Yeah, the, the what we can tell in the site, during the site visit, he was probably within six to 10 feet of the property line. And that was a rough est estimate. Um, but as far as the placement of the shed within our purview, I didn't have any any issue with it, but he understands that he has to um, look into where exactly his property line is sited mm -hmm. before pursuing so, um, this project. Okay, so does that mean that we're we're not, we can't approve it even though the, setbacks are the building department's concern more than ours? Which I wouldn't see a, an issue with approving it. Either. It's on a driveway. Yeah. There's no there's no, no issues with our commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. No. So how, how about how about then we make a motion to approve um, with the special conditions for sheds and with a note that if the um, uh, zoning requires that the shed be repositioned um, in in some kind of substantive amount further into the wetlands that they have to come back. So move. Uh, was that what you were going to say, Joanne? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Since I haven't been out there, I don't know how how that would change the the project. So yes, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we had we had a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, um, Joanne? Yes. Mike? Yes. Greg? Yes. Janet? Yes. Chuck? Yes. And I'm a yes as well, so, okay, moving on. Um, next up is administrative review filed by Gary Waller, applicant proposes a shed at property located at 230 Country Lane, map 18, parcel 232. And same question, were you guys, you had a site visit this morning, any thoughts from that? Okay. 
That looks like a no. Alex, anything you want to say here? Um, it was a you know already disturbed area. Very little uh, vegetation disturbance needed. I didn't have any issue with the location. Me either. Okay. And it's going to be set on some cement blocks. I mean, some cement tubes and blocks. So the framing would not be in contact with the soil. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we could have a motion to approve with the special conditions for sheds. Move to approve with special conditions for the shed and that the um, PT lumber not come in contact with the soil. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Jan, you have a second? Me or somebody else? Second. Did somebody. Okay. We have a second. Thank you. Uh, Janet? Yes. Greg? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Mike? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm a yes as well. Okay. Next, we have administrative review filed by William Harrison Swift and Henry Holcamp. Applicant proposes a shed at property located at 2200 State Highway, Map 15, Parcel 98A. And I see that the applicants are here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. Would you like to say anything or should we just continue the shed road show? I, I think that the uh, party was out here and saw the uh, saw the location. So I don't think we have any additional comments to make at this time. But we're ready to answer any questions that come up. Okay. So any questions or comments from the commission? And they should were they very graciously showed us around the property and where the shed would be, and they had stated that um, a couple of branches would have to be taken down from the cedar and a branch from the viburnum. Actually, that branch from the viburnum is on the ground. So, <laughs> and um, there's just uh, very low vegetation which they said wasn't even there about three weeks ago. So they're not disturbing much. And and they're very conservationist minded. I invited them to be on the conservation commission. Yeah. And, and, and I guess they've already down. been approached. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we've already been turned down. But they want to mind. ensure also that the area is in um, a good mode. <laughs> okay. So, sounds like we're all set. Um, we could have a, a motion to approve with the standard conditions for uh, sheds. Motion to approve with standard condition for sheds. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Mike? Yes. Greg? Yes. Janet? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Joanne? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So thank you for coming. And you. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next, we have administrative review filed by Alexander Bates, town of East Ham. Applicant proposes to place a sand fence across access trail to Great Pond, the property located at 1400 Herringbrook Road, map 10, parcel 001. And were you out there as well today? Yes. Yes. So, would you like to make any comments, observations, etc.? I'll comment that the place that the sand fence is suggested for has a nice trail right down to the water that's been created, not by the 1651 committee or anyone else. And um, there was some talk about maybe planting some plants there and roughing up the soil a little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I think this might be a this is a good first step and see if anything grows back. Um, Alex? I was thinking that we should certainly have a sign that accompanies the um, the sand fencing. So perhaps we can condition that um, the, the commission approves the sign, you know, for 
for the fence prior to the fence being installed. That sounds like a good idea. Uh -huh. I think it, it, it's important to let people know why the fence is there. Yeah. Get some education in with the uh, restoration effort. Yes. Okay. So I get the sense it's I get the sense it's not going to be a popular fence. So um, <laughs> well, we should have I, I... we should have our reasons out front uh, as to why you know, we decided to to pursue this. Yeah, I'm going to say that I already made sure that the our, that Suzanne Bryan, our select board liaison, knows about this, and she um, also informed the select board of our plans um, ahead of ahead of tonight's vote. Um, in case that they they received any complaints, they would know what we were doing because um, they did get a lot of um, feedback when we were started talking about changing the use regulations at Wiley. Mike? I just gonna mention, we, we our fenced in area is right next to it. And we put up originally habitat restoration area. Um, there were just signs and plastic bags and eventually they went away, but something like that, or even a little more wordy would be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think, as I said before, I have some waterproof paper that can go through a laser printer or a photocopier. Oh. I'd be happy to donate that. Okay. I'm sure we've got a laminator here at Town Hall, too. Um, okay. So for the sign, that could be something I could draft up and send around to the commission, mm -hmm. or is that something yeah. we want to vote on during the next meeting? I don't know that we need to vote on, vote on it. If you just circulate it, and we'll give you, yeah. and everybody sends the feedback, maybe to you and and me both. Okay. It, it should include something maybe about erosion, um, because that's one of the major issues with the um, unauthorized access points, and about the vegetation growing need, needing to be um, have time to recover. Okay, so somebody would like to make a motion to approve. I move to approve. And do we have a second? Second. Okay, Joanne? Yes. Mike? Yes. Chuck? No. Greg? Yes. Janet? Yes. And I'm a yes. So, uh, AR is approved. Okay. Next, we have a continuation of certificate of compliance filed by Gary and Jan Ross for SE 19 1798 for removal of existing dwelling and foundation and construct a new dwelling on a pile supported structure, the property located at 345 Harms Way, map 01, parcel 110. And uh, I see that Gary Ross is in the meeting, but I don't see John O'Reilly or anybody. Alex, do you know if they were planning to attend? Um, I have not heard an update from John O'Reilly. Um, I know we got the continuation request for the NOI, but I don't believe we received one for the um, certificate of compliance. Right, the, the letter specifically referenced the NOI. Right. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, I'm here. Yes. If I can answer any questions. I don't know what well, I can answer without any John O'Reilly or Tim Clink or anybody else, but I'd be glad to help. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure you can answer any questions without them because I think the majority of questions are um, related to the quantity of. Um, work that is not consistent with the order of conditions and how that is going to be addressed and how that happened. Okay. So, and, and I know it's your property, but you were not engaged in those decisions. Okay. Thank you. So, so I think, I think um, we should have a motion to continue this 
until it was, um, I think July 11th was the request, oh, July 9th. Um, that's the date they wanted to continue the NOI to as well. Move so to we continue could... to July 9th. Um, can we have a second? Second. Okay. okay, Greg? Yes. Janet? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Mike? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. And then next up is um, continuation of notice of intent filed by Gary S. and Jan E. Ross. Applicant proposes to implement a planting plan to restore the native plant community at property located at 345 Harms Way, map 01, parcel 110. And we were asked to continue this to the July 9th meeting. So if we could please have a motion for that. I make a motion to continue this to July 9th. And a second, second please. Okay, Janet? Yes. Greg? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Joanne? Joanne? Yes. Oh. Mike? Yes. And I am a yes. Okay. Next up, we have, I'm going to open the next two together. Uh, continuation of amended order of conditions filed by John Grieber. Applicant proposes to amend the condition concerning annual nourishment amount at property located at 245 Sparrow Road, map 004, parcel 187. Continuation of amended order of conditions filed by Andrew and Catherine Villardo, applicant proposes to amend the condition concerning annual nourishment amount at property located at 265 Sparrow Road, MAP 004, parcel 186. And I believe at the last meeting, um, we continued this as we had not yet received uh, the abutter notification cards. Is that right, Alex? Have we received them? Uh, yes, we've received them for, um, for both of them. Okay, and as we previously discussed this matter, I'm just going to ask if anybody has any additional questions or concerns. Okay, if not, um, can we have a motion to approve both of these? SB, um, oh, I don't have that. Uh, can we have a motion to approve both amendments? I move that we approve both amendments. And a second, please. Second. No, second. Okay, Mike? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Janet? Yes. Greg? Yes. And I'm a yes. So those are approved. And okay, we are moving very nicely. Um, next up is a discussion of any violations. And Alex, uh, looks like you're gonna give us an update on uh, 2845 State Highway. Um, yeah, as authorized by the commission during our last meeting, um, a $200 citation was mailed out to this property owner. So that's my, my update on, on that one. Also, we'll also keep monitoring, um, the dumping on that property. And if it's getting worse, then, uh, certainly update the commission. Okay. So, uh, have we asked the property owner to clean it up or? at least be in touch with us again um yes I, I i i requested them to clean it up i think it was by the 25th okay or the 24th excuse me so that we could so that'd be able to check on it i'd know prior to our next meeting if it's been addressed so if it's not cleaned up by the 25th then we'll issue additional fines okay. sounds good all right, next we have liaison reports. Mike, anything? No, nothing. Janet? <clears throat> yes, the um, Community Preservation Committee met and we reviewed uh, the proposed five-year plan, which would be for 2025 to 2029. And uh, the the changes had been made that we had asked for before, and we made a few more. So it is 
in a we approved of we approved it and our next meeting will be in September. And then uh, open space committee is meeting tomorrow at 2.30 instead of its usual third Wednesday of the month because people will be out of town. And then the um, strategic planning committee, committee meeting is at 4 p.m. tomorrow. And we're going to be reviewing um, a draft of the uh, objectives and uh, goals. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, education and training updates. Um, so I know you all received the Coastal Studies flyer on the um, shoreline management project and the um, educational opportunities and presentations they're planning to do. Um, is anybody planning to attend any of those? No. No. Okay. I was speaking of attending the, the training session in Provincetown. Uh, Alex or somebody else was going to go as well. But, um, and that's, I think, all there is. Oh, I know, I know that the MACC sent out a uh, email yesterday with some updated information about um, training they have available, including um, several of the um, fundamental classes. Okay. Um, and the, Wood, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution is presenting oh. uh, several different programs, but most especially they're giving a presentation before the Cape Symphony performances this coming weekend on Saturday and Sunday. So I will be there to hear that. Okay. I believe that's part of the Cape Resiliency Week. Yes. Program that they're doing. Um, okay. And then minutes. So we have a lot of minutes tonight. April 9th, 2024, April 23rd, 2024. Um, May 23rd, 2024, executive session minutes, and May 23rd, 2024, executive session online minutes. Um, any comments or changes mm -hmm. or? Oh, um, okay. Well, 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 just okay. One. Um, we may want to take a look at April 23rd, 2024. I think that uh, Chuck has a couple of extra nays in there for uh, adjourning and for minutes approval. So is, I can assume those are wrong. Oh, Amy has a hand raised. Yeah, Amy? Yes, Janet brought those to my attention and they've already been fixed. Good job, Amy. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. <laughs> and good job, Janet and Greg. Um, so if we could- Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> That's okay. We'll hold each other's hand. <laughs> I like it. All right. So if we could have a motion to approve all four sets of minutes. Move to approve all four minutes. And a second? Second. Okay. Mike? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Janet? Yes. Greg? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Okay. Um, Oh, um, so, oh, I've got the minutes open instead of looking at the agenda. That doesn't help. Um, all right, other discussion. So under other discussion, um, we have Karen Strauss reappointment as Conservation Commission Liaison to Strategic Planning Committee and the Open Space Committee. Oh, Amy, do you still have something to say or just your hands still up? Um, okay, does anybody have any comments on that or would somebody like to make a motion? I make a motion to approve both com committees. And is there a second? Second. Okay, Chuck? Yes. Greg? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Mike? Yes. 
Janet? Yes. Greg? Yes, twice. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll vote twice. <laughs> OK. I'm sorry for that. And I'm a yes. Karen, are we supposed to um, report that we're continuing on a committee? I haven't done that before, so I think I have neglected so, to do that. So if your term is coming to an end, um, generally, if you want to continue and you haven't termed out, which is three terms, um, three full terms, partial terms don't count um, towards that, then usually you have to let the town clerk know before the end of, of June, thir before June 30th of the year that you're terming. Yeah, but do we have to put it in our agenda? That's what I meant. No, no, because uh, in this committee, everybody's appointed by the select board. And okay. if, if it's a committee that you're a liaison to from CONCOM, then it does have to come up for a, a vote. All right, that's what I was oh. getting at. I didn't state it clearly because I have not done that in the past. So well, I'll have to in the future if it occurs. Oh, we've taken care of it in the past. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, and I, I'm usually on top of all that for, for all okay. of this art. So, uh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so then we have on the agenda a preliminary discussion on conservation agent approving tree removal. and. Um, Given that we've uh, given Alex permission um, or authority to approve the water service connections and to uh, do the um, enforcement letters for the um, um, the PT fences and signs and so on, and that Alex has been our conservation agent for long enough to understand how um, the commission thinks on certain things, including trees. I thought that perhaps we might want to discuss giving Alex the authority to approve um, administrative reviews for uh, tree removals for one, possibly two trees uh, with certain conditions um, where he would, um, if those conditions don't exist, he would then uh, put it on the agenda for our review. And I thought um, I'd bring that up and we can talk about it and you can think about it further. And we can Well, I like the fact input. that it would be for one, maybe two trees under certain conditions, and that if there were other conditions that it would come before us, because I think we have had some issues with tree removal and not all the commission has agreed. So some might approve, some might not approve. And in an instance like that, I think it should come before us um, partly to take the burden off of Alex, <laughs> but also because I'd like some input on some of these. <laughs> right, because you're the Lorax. Right. <laughs> and, you, and you speak for the trees. Um, and we found a great oh. example in Wiley Park this morning that Greg is very connected to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you have a favorite tree there? Well, there's an owl tree there. Ah. If, you, if you go on the path across from the playground, on the, the path that goes, I guess, north, or, there's, a, there's an owl that was living in that tree. A great horn? I'm no. not sure. Uh, it's, just, it's a screech owl. Oh, OK. Only, you know, a softball size hole. Yeah. That's pretty cool, though. I love screech owls. Um, Alex? Um, I know I'd certainly be, be in favor of this. It would um, kind of free up our agendas a bit uh, during ConsCom and uh, kind of speed up the process here in the office when it comes to uh, these requests. Uh, all this authority might go straight to my head, though. So yeah. <laughs> gotta be careful. Um, but I do want to make sure that you know that we have certain conditions where you know where I would make these these approvals because I don't want any of the commissioners to be upset if they feel like they, you know these should be coming in front of the commission. And obviously, if I felt like you know it was on the edge or you know, if I was unsure, I'd certainly bring it to 
to the commission, mm -hmm. but um, I certainly want to make sure that I understand what the commission is comfortable looking at truth. So whether or not that's discussed tonight or it's an ongoing discussion and we finalize it at a different meeting, um, I'm game for you guys. Okay. Uh, Joanne? Yeah, so exactly what Alex was already starting to talk about. I'm curious what the mechanism is for us to be able to provide him like written guidance uh, and then uh, I know Janet is the Lorax, but I, I'd like to be at Lorax Jr. I am very <laughs> in favor of, off the top of my head, I mean, the two-to-one replacement, unless it's a well-wooded lot, uh, and as well as leaving a stand if we can, uh, and leaving that also at Alex's discretion, but, off, you know, those are the two that come to my mind immediately as things that I would, I would like to say. I know people often suggest, you know, shrubberies and we go back and forth. The trees are always better. Uh, so, so that's uh, maybe if, if others have ideas, but that's my start. That's a good start. Anybody else have thoughts tonight, or do you want to, Chuck? I'm in favor of it. Um, I think he's already shown enough judgment and worked with us enough to have a pretty good feel for when to say that something needs to go to the commission and when it doesn't. And as a counterpoint, just imagine a good 90 mile an hour nor'easter knocking over about 500 trees in our jurisdiction. How many of these do you want to have in front of us? Yeah, but but under those conditions, he could approve them as emergency orders, and we just have to ratify. So. Well, anyway, I'm in favor of it. I don't like micromanagement. Yeah, uh, Alex, you wanted to add anything? I'm just thinking back to. You know, the, the requests that we've received since I've been the, the agent, uh, most of the time it's for a hazardous tree, storm damage, potentially pests as well. So I think those are like three um, easy ones that we could potentially um, include as conditions for approving this and maybe a numerical number as well no more than two trees so i guess that's my start yeah and also dead trees there dead trees People. yeah yeah does that sound good to everybody or would you like some additional time to consider one more question what about um, what about size because I know we've had some debates about the really big trees that are kind of sort of dying, but maybe can be saved. I'm curious if we should have a a trigger for when a tree is beyond a particular size. Or if we leave that to Alex's discretion too, mm -hmm. but say we'd like to see the the really like big trees come to us. Larger trees come in front of the commission. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could certainly. Yeah, and, and perhaps trees that might benefit from a pruning instead of um, being cut down? Well, Karen did say under certain conditions, but we didn't stipulate all the conditions. Well, mm. that was this discussion. Okay. <laughs> that, that we would figure them out. So I guess that would be one of the conditions. Yeah. So it sounds like we have a decent list. How about um, that we kind of put it into something a little formal and and review it next time and vote on it. And then yeah. if you have any additional thoughts, we can incorporate them then. I like the sounds of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, game camera for Wiley Park. And Alex was gonna look into the cost of those. And he included that in the staff report. Yes. Yes. So, so any... I've got I've got experience with this brand, which is why I, I chose it for my pricing. Um, they're pretty pretty rugged and, and reliable. You know, there was discussion about potentially doing cellular game camera so i priced out both cellular and non-cellular so there is like a monthly fee for our cellular game camera if we 
decide to go that way, but. I think cellular is much better. I have the old fashioned one, I've got one right here. Um, they're a pain in the neck to keep getting the, you know, the card out of it. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, because it might be pretty high. You'd have to climb up a tree every time to get the hammer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and and the other point for the cellular was that we wanted to monitor the fence, and and have have somebody that it could be replaced or repaired if somebody damages it quickly. Mm -hmm. Because part of the point is to um, indicate that we really don't want people creating these private pathways to the pond. And um, if we keep fixing a fence as it might get damaged or removed, then that that enforces the message. And the, the so, yeah, and having the cellular means that um, Alex or somebody doesn't have to run out every day and check on it. So it, 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 it um, minimizes staff time. For that because it doesn't take too long to load up the camera view and take a look. Alex? Yeah. And so these cameras will be used for monitoring not enforcement. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask, what do you get with a month cellular plan? Is that storage? That does include storage. Um, I'm just curious. Um, yeah, could look that up real quick. And I guess the that seems like a reasonable cost. Just would we get? It, I don't think we'd necessarily get it cheaper from. Do you know which who's providing the cellular service? Or is that? Um, Something we um, let's pick. see. I don't think we get to pick. And if I recall, I believe it's Verizon. Okay. That should be robust enough for the, that location. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so the, the, the plan that I priced out, I believe that was this 1699. Um, that includes unlimited storage for pictures. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. There's a cheaper plan, um, for $10 a month. And that gives you thousand pictures of storage so it's in the cloud and then 10 videos, $16.99 a month is unlimited pictures and 50 videos. So there's a setting on the camera where you could take either just pictures, just photos, or just pictures, just videos, or you could do a mix of both. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. yeah, and and you want to figure out how to best balance the battery life. Right. Right. For that. What's the gap okay. between pictures? Shoots. Um, those. That's a setting that can be adjusted. So. Could be one picture after another, or you could you could program a delay for yeah. a couple of seconds, bring up to a minute, I think. So it's it's quite customizable, um, so that you could yeah you know, have the settings set to something that works well for what you're looking at. Is there or the a, cameras placed? Does it come up with an app? Or do you have to climb up to the box to reset it? Does it come with an app? Is that you know, if you choose to change the setting, do you want oh I see less delay um, put on the ground or that, I'm not sure. You know, I haven't had any experience with the um with the mobile or with the with the cellular. Yeah. I don't ones, but yeah, I'm but, not sure. But somebody's gonna have to uh, get to the camera from time to time to change out the memory card and the battery. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these Anyways. have solar panels. I don't know. I have I have a bird camera that has a so little solar panel on it, 
takes a lot of the aggravation yeah. of the battery out of it. I don't, I don't think know. that would work well as this is a heavily shaded wooded area. We had too much cover. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So what would you like to do? Would you like um so this this spending would come from the conservation fund, which is um a, as we've talked about before, a fund specifically to deal with open space related um things. And we have about seventy three hundred dollars in that fund at the moment. So this this would not make a huge dent in that if you're interested. So we would have to have a vote to approve the purchase of the cameras and the spending from the conservation fund. Alec? And I think even you know, beyond monitoring this fence in the future, it'd be great to have these cameras posted at other conservation uh, mm -hmm. properties and perhaps we could monitor wildlife with them. So it's multifunctional um, mm -hmm. going into the future. Right. So, uh, and also as, as we said at the previous meeting, one would go at the fence area and the other one would go um, to keep, uh, to monitor the Nickerson um, area where people have been launching the boats. Joanne? Yeah, just asking uh, the obvious question, uh, am I locking myself into a 12, 24, 36 month uh, commitment if I uh, sign on to this monthly plan? I I'm not sure how much time we need for this project and whether or not we can think of enough projects to cover whatever whatever plan we have to sign on the dotted line for or Alex has to sign on the dotted line for. <laughs> They're just putting that out there before we approve some like 12 year commitment uh, <laughs> that we're, we unknowing, <laughs> unknowingly agree to. That's a very good question. That is something I didn't necessarily look into prior to tonight's meeting. So annual, it's probably annual. Yeah, I mean, if it's a year, I, th I think I'm OK with it. And then, you know, we can go from there. Beyond a year, I'd be a little skeptical. Let's see what they say. So it looks like you have the option of doing monthly or annually. Yeah. And is that the same price? I think so. Yeah. I mean, the intense monitoring period is going to be eight, the six months, right? Early, early summer, late fall. Right. After that, not a lot of people going over there. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah there is. The, the dogs? <laughs> oh, you are, but I mean, the dog people. Well, well that, that, that's all, people use it all year round. Yeah. yeah. Hence, the, hence the Christmas ornaments that go up, you know. <laughs> Um, do, we have any, do we have any information on how long the batteries last and what, you know, do they have little solar charges on them or does somebody have to climb around and change the batteries every <laughs> month? They do have solar accessories. Yeah, but they really wouldn't work, I think. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it depends on where you place them. I don't see the batteries. Six recharge bulb. So these use these use sixteen AA batteries, and oh, so you could you could use sixteen lithium AA's, which would extend the life significantly. Yeah, and I'm sure it depends on what settings you have it set to, but um, you know, it's, it's at least a couple months. They said the battery life can be up to a year. So it's not something you're going to be changing out week so, to week. Mm -hmm. So if we're using more stills and less video, it should last longer. Yes. But we should probably budget for some batteries or we can approve that as we need to. 
maybe we can um set a budget limit like uh what is it three for this was this like a thousand dollar project it's like it's under a thousand but if we have any other unanticipated needs for the project we could authorize up to a thousand dollars based on this proposal and if for some reason that's not you know uh, for a year of uh investigative study and if we need to go beyond that alex would need to come back i mean just to not micromanage mm -hmm. as uh, chuck suggested <laughs> I, I would be okay with that what about the yeah. rest of you i'll be good with that that's good yeah. looks like duracell double a's are about a buck a piece yeah, but we should look at the lithium, the Energizer lithium yeah. or other brands, because that's what I use in my cameras and flashes, and it gives significantly uh, greater life. And that's and that's what people recommend for uh, cellular game cameras in any case, I think. Yeah, they're about $1.80 a piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're... they're I think they're worth the money from my experience. Okay. As long as we allocate the money for it. Mm -hmm. And I've been using the the lithium batteries for maybe 10 years now. So. Um, okay, so if somebody would like to make a motion um, to approve a maximum budget of $1,000 on, what did you call it, Joanne? Project. <laughs> what did I call it? <laughs> uh, uh, let's say I I move that we authorize the conservation agent to spend up to a thousand dollars on uh, the proposed uh, trail cam project for purchase of camera and additional accessories as needed for the length of one year. Uh, and that if such time we need to extend the time period or dollar amount, that he would come back to us for additional authorizations. Okay. Could you add in that it, the money come from the conservation fund? The, and that the money come from the conservation fund to fund this project. Okay. okay. Nicely said. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, did I hear, hear a second? Yes, second. Okay. Chuck? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Mike? Yes. Greg? Yes. Janet? Yes. And I'm a yes. So, there we go. And that seems to have ended our regular meeting um, for the night. You know, we have an executive session coming up next. So if we could have a, a motion to adjourn. I uh, just Mike? quickly, Karen, oh, this Mike? is Wayne. Yeah. Yes. And I just uh, let you know that we're obviously shutting this down, going on to the executive session. I'll need maybe four or five minutes to get this stuff shut down and start the other one. So everybody can have five minutes off, you know, cook dinner, do the dishes, oh. vacuum, and then come back. Okay. Well, I have some comments <laughs> on the any other topics. Okay, go ahead, Janet. Okay. <laughs> um, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. I was at First Encounter Beach Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon, and I have some positive comments for the uh, trucks. I saw one each day driving across flats to go out to the shellfish um, sites, driving very slowly, very carefully in between the markers. And there were a lot of people on the beach and on the flats and all over. And I was very impressed um, uh, with the driving and the low speed. And on one of the, I think it was on Sunday, the shellfish constable, not Devon, but her assistant, had walked out ahead of the truck and came back. And I talked to her to introduce myself and tell her I was impressed with what I saw. And I said, you know, it's a really hot day today, and you have all black on. And she said, <laughs> well, this is a required uniform. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think we should be able to permit you to wear something else when it's so hot out. <laughs> so anyway, good report. Yes, thank you for sharing. Anybody yeah. else? 
Okay, so if we could have a motion to adjourn and then we'll return at, um, let's make it uh, 657. And we need a different sign on, right? Uh, it's the same, it's just, just stay stay in the meeting. We're just oh. gonna take a, a, a break. Okay. Is that correct? Because in the agenda announcement, there's a different meeting number and a different Is there time. a different, oh, I thought it, we can do that either way, Karen. We can stay on this meeting and give us time to take it off air and stop recording and things like that. Or you can go to the other site that we had. We were just, you know, avoiding the problems we had before, but we should be fine if you just want to hang here after you adjourn. Um, well, I think we posted it as a public meeting, so we okay. have to... Um, okay, we'll go to the D Baker. Was that's the the next info? That's how you get to your executive session. Okay, so yeah. um, and now we've used up several minutes. So, um, yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, so about, we just adjourn so, here, and we'll see you on the other channel. Okay, so how about we have a motion to adjourn, and we come back at seven o'clock. Okay, move to adjourn, and a second. 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 Mike? Yes. Janet? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Greg? Yes. Joanne? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. See you soon.